So yes, uh, before I start, I, uh, so this, this talk is about the UX of UX, so the, uh, by UX here I mean user experience. Uh, so basically, uh, let me tell you a bit about myself. Uh, I started working as an open source programmer uh, approximately five and a half years back. And that's pretty much when I started programming this now. I mean, my first commit to code was on an open source project, so I owe it a lot to open source and stuff like that. Uh, I've seen the transition happening from Gitorious days to GitHub to now GitLab and all those fancy stuff. Who am I? I am, I am Raghu. I am an interaction design student in Stockholm. I also am a huge, huge open source fan, as I said. And this talk is about the user experience of great, building great user experiences. Uh, what goes behind the scene? Because there, I mean, as we know, there are like a very few designers like being uh, open source, being super engineering heavy. So it, this talk it focuses as how, as a developer, you can get more designers, you can go get more content writers on board. So before I start, so how many people here maintain repositories on on whichever platform? Can I have a raise of hand? How many people actually need designers? Do uh, you guys have a tough time finding designers in the open source field? <laughs> so yeah, we do. Uh, so yes, uh, before, uh, we, so we have this platform called the open source design.net, which I am uh, being a part of since some time now. We are open SRC design on Twitter. Uh, basically, we are a bunch of cool designers. We are a lot of them, as you can see on the photos, so split in 2017, Uh We work on open source projects. We have a job posting, so we, if you guys are having open source projects which need a, which need open source design love, you can go ahead and post your uh, job openings over there. We'll probably have a have a look at that. So that's like the, probably the easiest way to get designers for your projects. So yes, uh, talking about open source, how do you get design? How do you get people who do not write code onboarded onboarded with your software? The easiest way to do this is to be more welcoming. Now, by being more welcoming, I'm not saying, um, say, by being more welcoming, I do not say I'm replying back to emails. Yes, that's important. Replying back in IRC, that's important. What I'm trying to say here is, you need you need to document contribution guidelines. The contribution guidelines is basically the README page or something which people, which which people can read, which does not contain code, which contains your project screenshots, which describe your projects really, really well, which describe what the project does, which has a styling list of features, and the most importantly, the developer setup. Set the longer the developer setup, the, the more time it takes for anyone who doesn't know how to program to get onboarding with that, so you've got to minimize that as well. We'll hit that topic a little bit in the talk too. Using Wiki effectively, so this, this is a principle which got me in, uh, which, which I, read a lot while I was contributing to KDE UX. They have solid wiki pages, they have solid documentation over here, the design languages, everything, everything is very, very well, quite, very well documented. But wiki is kind of underused in small, smaller open source projects. A lot of people are even aware of the fact that GitHub and GitLab, both of them, uh, have an option to add wiki. So, I, 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 uh, so people don't really do that. So it's a good idea to keep the wikis updated so that for the developers, designers, having your code of conducts over there, having your style guides, having your future releases, and how, how, what's, going to, what's going to release, that's, that's, always going to be, that's always a good idea. You have issue trackers. So, uh, this is, uh, when, I started, uh, when I started working with KDE, back in the day that there was, uh, there was no GitHub and stuff, there was something which got me hooked onto it. That thing, was actually the design plus junior jobs. They use the concept of multiple tags. Uh, junior jobs could be for developers, junior jobs could be for designers, junior jobs could be for content people, junior jobs are junior jobs. I mean, not just using issue tracker effectively, but bifurcating your issue tracker into multiple, uh, multiple smaller issues so that you get the right audience. Like say, I'm a content person. I mean, a junior job could be a, a, a front end developer's work or can be a content person's work as well. So bifurcating into junior job plus content or junior job plus design could be a good way to get a new designer on board. Simplifying, simplifying onboarding. By simplifying onboarding, 
I mean, I mean, uh, so this happened with me five years back. This happened with me last night as well. Uh, basically, you have these these bunch of commands you have to run to get onboarded on open source project. Basically, you have to like run your server, then you need your CSS needs compilation, then you do all sorts of work, and at the end you finally fail. Uh, as, a as a developer, I can figure out my way out. But as a designer, it's very difficult for me to do that. I mean, anything which involves a terminal probably gets me worked up, you know, it's difficult. So that's, that's, that's when I get off-boarded the project. So the reducing installation steps is one good way to go ahead and do that. A cross classic example, which I probably put out in every talk I give about open source design, is the WordPress Python install. It's simple, there's no code involved, and it's, it's, it's translated into as many languages as possible. I mean, translation is not possible for smaller projects, but keeping a GUI in, uh, in place to set up projects, uh, it's, it's very much possible. The, another project I was involved for, I am involved in quite some time, does it in a super, super more classy way as Nextcloud. We have like a, we, it takes roughly around 50 seconds, 15 seconds to get your Nextcloud set up and, and running. One of the things which is actually a pretty debated topic and I wanted to discuss about that in more detail is design objectivity. Design objectivity is something which, as an engineer, uh, I also also practice at times, unknowingly or knowingly. Design objectively, in other terms, is also called as pixel fucking. <laughs> so, what the fuck is pixel fucking? So basically, I had this conversation with my boss last night about working on some design, and some stupid client fucked it up over pixels, like over, over midnight, or he might just do it more. So basically, and this is from the Urban Dictionary, by the way, this is how Urban Dictionary puts up pixel photo. So basically, the idea is to be more pragmatic about design. So as, as engineers, we get anal over, we get very anal about numbers. A lot of discussions involve around having how much border radius we have, what's the background color, why the background color is like five, uh, five points, uh, five hash values lower, why the background color is like that. These discussions uh, are important in, and can be worked up in large projects, but in small projects, they actually slow down the pro uh, they, they actually slow down the entire you know, release cycle. So basically, but the point here being is, be more pragmatic about design. Do not let a lot of visual design feedback stop you from releasing features. Uh, keep your uh, feature cycle faster. Iterate over design, and just 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 do it over iterations. Just don't drag an issue about visual design for like 30 all comments, uh, because what happens in general is. You have great designs which get lost in the middle. And the easy way to fix is defining a design language. Now by, design, by defining a design language, I don't mean CSS. I mean it could be visual at its best. I mean if you have a style guide, nothing beats that. But even if you have a wiki of design thoughts about what you think your project looks like, what your design language sounds like, what content, you, what kind of content you, are you talking third person, you talking first person? What kind of content you, you guys address? Is also one of the easy ways to, uh, to figure to, uh, to onboard a designer so that he has a sense of uh, how easy working, uh, how the product works. Another thing which is a problem, which I also faced as a maintainer for like a couple of rebels, was dealing with feature requests. We had like a shit ton of feature requests coming in almost on a daily basis. Like around, probably like someone is, uh, general feature request sounds like it will be cool to have X for the next release itself. Now, what you can do in dealing with so many feature requests when they come, you can all, either implement all of them, or just don't implement all of them at once. Keep them on hold, iterate over them, and you pull up features. So, GitHub recently introduced like a, a thumbs up and thumbs down pull request. They also have a thumbs up and th thumbs down on issues. Now, uh, you can use that feature to actually pull up which features are important and what the people actually want. This helps, we, uh, this helps also figuring out what is the version one, or what features can go in uh, the first version, and what features can go in the consecutive versions. Design thinking. Now design thinking, and I can't stop pressing about it, but sadly at this point of time, open source is very, very, very engineering driven. There are very few designers because most of the designers get off for it really fast. So having a design uh, involved since the very beginning of the project can actually, uh, can actually solve a lot of problems later on. I mean, I can, I, I can talk about Nextcloud since we, we were like 15 at the start, 
and we have a super solid design right now. Primarily because we have designed since the start of the project. So, uh, in, in nutshell, if I do a recap, you could be welcoming. By welcoming, I mean uh, keep your contribution guidelines up. You could simplify onboarding. Do not, uh, do not have too many CLI uh, commands for uh, a setup, or especially for people for who want to design and who are translators and stuff like that. Being pragmatic about it, be more pragmatic about design. Do not drag discussions to 50 or 60 or 70 comments because good designs can be lost in the middle. You can pull out features which will help you iterate over design faster. Or you can, or you can include designs at the start because including designs at the start makes automatically solves half the problem. So yes, this is me. And I think it's a good time for Q&A.